Clowns, created, directed, and presented by Reverend Dr. Dickie Joe Mullen. In this reflection, Dr. Mullen will talk about clown lore, the history of clowns across many of the continents, and current concern about clowns who are showing up in many communities and striking fear in citizens. This is Dickie Joe Mullen in Orlando, Florida, wondering whether you have cholerophobia uh, or whether you are a coolerophile. I hope I caught your interest. That means are you afraid of or do you love clowns? Fear of clowns, that's actually a very, very common fear and it is becoming more recognized and uh, coming up a lot more. Clowns. Twisted strands of humor and horror combining happiness with the grotesque. Electric orange hair topped by a ridiculously tiny hat. Huge shoes, bright baggy clothes, and makeup with exaggerated features. The archetypal clown's purpose is complex and magical all at the same time. The goal is to establish instant rapport with the onlookers as a clown and affect a situation. Elements of incongruence and the unexpected come into play whenever a clown appears. Balloon work, juggling, acrobatics, amusing magic tricks, all set to cheerful calliope music at the circus. That's how the good clowns, the professional clowns, like to present themselves. During the 1960s, Bozo the Clown was such an endearing figure. His stunts brought pleasure to millions of viewers on weekly television programs. Patch Adams, medical doctor, was another beloved clown for over 40 years. Dr. Adams, in a clown costume, would visit hospital patients to bring the healing gift of laughter. Patch told audiences to speak only of the joy in their lives, and if there was no joy, he'd still make them laugh because he'd say, well, lie if you don't have any joy. Patch Adams became a popular movie starring Robin Williams, and in 1963, Ronald McDonald joined McDonald's as an appealing clown spokesman. Ronald McDonald charmed children of all ages over fast food meals, and eventually the medical and healing tradition with clowns followed as the Ronald McDonald House was established. And this followed the tradition of Patch Adams as a charity to create a positive environment for the families of children hospitalized with serious illnesses. Emmett Kelly and Red Skelton played endearing hobo and tramp clowns who became media sensations during the mid-20th century. Many will recall smiling at Willie or Freddy the Freeloader. Strolling further down Clown Alley, clowning has its roots in ancient Egypt during the 5th dynasty. This was about 2500 BC. Pygmies were included to introduce a touch of entertainment during religious observances. In China, about 300 BC, a famous clown named Yu Si was a popular court jester. Because he had the ear of the emperor, this clever clown saved thousands of lives. The emperor wanted to use forced labor to paint the Great Wall of China white a task which would surely have sacrificed many lives, and you see won the hearts of the people by humorously pointing out the absurdity of this idea. Clown-like relics have been incorporated into various ceremonies to invoke sympathetic magic throughout the ages. The addition of comedy to reinforce solemn religious rites goes way back to Greek and Roman times. The rituals of the Hopi Native Americans of the of Southwest also were brightened by interlopers who would wear ridiculous masks and costumes. By the Middle Ages, dwarves and lunatics often dressed in belled caps and bright garments were kept as valued pets in royal courts. 
amusing yet able to answer back to authorities, these characters slowly began to develop into contemporary clowns. Don Rice was an historic clown whose character evolved into Uncle Sam, a caricature for the United States government, wearing a top hat, whiskers, with a star-striped suit and trousers in the color of the flag. As Uncle Sam, Rice campaigned for President Zachary Taylor during the presidential election of 1848, and the whole election was swayed by a bit of clowning around. Isn't that interesting? And another U.S. president, Richard Nixon, loved clowns so much that he established National Clown Week. It's still observed yearly from August 1st through the 7th. Astrologically, the second decanate of Leo relates especially to clowns, and it's interesting that August 1st to 7th spans that part of the zodiac. So I don't know whether former President Nixon knew that or used astrology. I know certain presidents have, especially in the Reagan White House and in the Founding Fathers calculations, astrology figured in, but I thought it was interesting that those degrees of clowning figured in with um, National Clown Week, and also the planets Venus and Saturn are related to clowning traditionally. Venus relates to pleasure, joy, anything happy, and then Saturn has to do with dealing with satire and balancing tragedy with a bit of comedy. The word clown originally referred to a lout, a bumpkin with poor manners, a loser, a target of ridicule. He or she would make others laugh. Think of the class clown back in school. In schools, the clown tends to be a poor student, annoying, yet charismatic, and usually someone we might remember more than the good students. Perhaps that's because clowns can make all of us feel better about ourselves when they mess up, at least sometimes. Uh, there have always been those who secretly mistrust and fear clowns, though, and during the 1800s, Joseph Grimaldi, a stage personality, created his playful and enthusiastic Joey, a prototype, prototype and slang term for the red and white clowns that we see to this day. In his memoirs, Joey Grimaldi admits that I am grim all day, but I make you laugh at night. His personal life was alcoholic, lonely, and tragic. Some of his stunts bordered on criminality, and perhaps that's when slowly trouble for the clowns began to brew. The pranks and the clown's elements of caricature and tomfoolery can have a sinister slant, even a sadistic side. Coolerophobia, the intense fear of clowns, is on the rise. It affects a large segment of the population, spanning all ages. Professional clowns, the good ones, have become very concerned about this trend. By the way, did you know Ronald McDonald is on the unemployment line? McDonald's canceled him recently because he began to inspire too much fear among the visitors of all ages at McDonald's restaurant. And the demand for clowns as entertainers at birthday parties and other events has all but dissolved. A horror genre of killer clowns seems to be expanding into real-life pranks. Perhaps this intensified when Stephen King introduced Pennywise, the murderous clown in his novel, followed by two films titled It. The second one's about to come out in a few weeks. I can't wait, actually. An episode of The Simpsons shows Bart Simpson cowering in terror because he thinks a clown is going to come to eat him. Emmett Kelly was tapped to play the role of a homicidal clown in a film called The Fat Man, but he refused to compromise Willie, his beloved tramp character. Instead, Kelly appeared on set as a generic white-faced clown with tufts of red hair and a painted teardrop going down his cheek. 
Then there was John Wayne Gacy. Until his arrest for more than 30 murders as a serial killer, he was known around Chicago as a clown, Pogo the Clown, and he masqueraded the rest of the time as a respected member of the community, went to Mass almost every morning. Once he was arrested in prison, what do you think Gacy has spent his time doing? Painting clown portraits. Interesting, anyway, I thought so. The 21st century finds many real-life pranksters periodically appearing dressed up as clowns, this phenomena has been observed in almost every state in the Union and in numerous countries throughout Europe, in Mexico, and Canada, often brandishing knives or baseball bats as weapons, mysterious clowns have been seen wandering along dark streets at the edges of parks and wooded areas. They will dart into view at a distance and then disappear. Many of these clown characters seem to get a thrill out of terrifying children. When asked, they have been heard to say that clowns live in a cottage in the woods. Predatory clown sightings seem to come in cycles. Often near Halloween, they will peak. And while not actually illegal, stalker clown activities are dangerous. Now, this is as much for the pranksters as for the intended targets. Some clowns have been chased by mobs, attacked, and beaten. Recently, costume shops have even refused to stock clown costumes. Once very popular, there's a fear that either the clown or victims could be harmed. Clown alleys, that's a term for a cavalcade of dedicated entertainers and the places where they prepare for their acts. Honking bulb horns in genuine alarm, Clowns of America International, an organization of professional clowns, wants to overcome all this bad juju. Abel Dimples the Clown has led the way in promoting the Eight Clown Commandments as a step toward restoring the transcendent joy, humor, and affection to be offered in the intriguing art and craft of the long-standing clown tradition. The Eight Clown Commandments began with keeping acts and performance and behavior in good taste and extend to address makeup, not drinking and smoking or being intoxicated, and then also um, only keeping the highest standards and appearing in as many clown shows as possible, and there's more. Recently here in downtown Orlando, there was a major alert at one of the high schools because a clown was spotted wandering the edges of the campus, and then it disappeared. And there was a lot of speculation about the magic, controversy, supernatural qualities. It at least livened up the school day anyway, but it does seem as though clowning is um, interesting, complex, dangerous, and evolving. This is Dickie Joe Mullen in Orlando, Florida, leaving you with smiles and thoughts about what humor really is and what it might not be.